Understanding how to adjust levels and what the histogram chart shows you is important so that you can um, most efficiently balance your dark, mid-tone, and highlight levels. We're going to find the histogram chart under Image, Adjustments, Levels. And this will often be the first correction you do on an image. This will bring up this levels chart and this piece right here, this is called a histogram. There's a black marker, a gray, and a white. And what this chart is telling you should be what your eyeballs already were telling you in the first place. In this document, I have a tremendous amount of white. I have some mid-tones, a little bit of dark, but really not very much. So let's look at how this chart looks. There are a lot of white values. See how many black parts are here on this chart. Not very many mid-tones and a little bit of black. As I move the markers, if I slide the white one to the left, it will push things that were in the mid-range to become white. If I move the black one to the right, it will take things that were in the mid-tone and force them to become black. If I take the gray one and move it to the left, it is taking values that were pixels that were mid-tones and creating them in a larger, this is all white or lighter gray now. And now if I move this to the right, it takes things that were in the darker range and moving more of those pixels to be dark as opposed to they were here in the lighter range before. So let's look at the histograms of a couple of different images. So what do our eyeballs tell us? We have some darks. We have a lot of mid-tones. There are some highlights here. He definitely has some white in his teeth, but not a tremendous amount of white. So let's see. Yep, we have some darks. We have a lot of mid-tones. Some in the light, but not a tremendous amount of pure white. One of the first things I like to do is to bring my marker over to the toe of the graph where the graph really kind of st starts moving. It didn't make a huge difference, but it is brightening along his forehead a bit. And then I could decide whether I want his face maybe to be a little darker or brighten this up some. I'm not sure I would move the black too much. If you see as I'm moving this over, I'm really losing a lot of detail here in his hair, and I'm not sure that's a great idea. But moving the gray a little bit to darken maybe the mid-tones is not bad. And you can see how we've increased the contrast and made it a little bit more dy dynamic that way. So again, let's look at another image. We have lights. We have some mid-tones. There are definitely some blacks happening. So let's see how this chart compares. You can see it's a far more balanced graph. We have things in a, quite a number of pixels in all of the areas. Quite a few black, a bit in the mid-tone, and a bit up here at the highlight. Now, there's not technically a lot that needs to be done to this, but notice if I take the gray and move it a little bit to the left, I get a little more detail happening in this tree line. That said, simply doing that is probably not a great idea because it's also washing out my image. So I'm going to need to contrast with a little bit more black. So here's before and here's after. So adjusting your histogram chart can really make a big difference about what you want to be important and where you want things to be contrasted or not before, after. We'll look at one last one. So I would expect to see quite a few highlights on this histogram, a lot of white, some in the midtones, hardly any black. So let's look, oops, sorry, let's look at the histogram chart. Okay, oh, we have a level adjustment here that snuck in. Let's cancel that and try that all over again. Back in my background layer. That is why our chart looked all funky. So again, I expected to see a lot of midtones. I actually expected to see more highlights than it's currently here. If you notice, this chart is telling me I have nothing in the pure white range at the moment and nothing in the pure dark. So if I simply move my markers to the toe of the graph, 
Here's just to where the graph starts. Here's before, here's after. That definitely makes a difference. Notice though the graph is very flat right away. So I could even try sliding along that flat line and see if I like what's happening there. And that's not so bad either. So notice how much more dynamic those clouds are becoming and how much more contrast is happening, dark to light. Again, we could change where the gray values are landing. You'll find you don't need to move the gray nearly as much as you end up moving black and white. Um, this is really your first step to help make sure that you have an appropriate and an attractive amount of contrast in each image that you're working on.